tried to focus on what's in front of me and and hope and believe that someday things will be different. And sure enough, you know, they became different over time. How have you dealt with adversity like that? Adversity and overcoming that, you know, that challenge because you were wanting to work with him, you know, and I know you came back to the U.S. and you got that role and that was awesome. But mentally, how do you overcome that? you know, let's say fear, whether you're jumping off of a building or that disappointment and not getting that role with him. How have you dealt with adversity like that in your life? I think you just give it time. I, you know, there was, there was a really rough time for me and it was in the 2014, 2015, 2016 range. And part of it was this falling out with David because we had all this momentum going and then it just shifted. It was like a 180. It was, I didn't know what happened. All of a sudden, it just, the relationship blew up and it didn't make any sense to me. And I didn't understand it. And clearly there was some miscommunication culturally on multiple levels and other things. And so it was this really weird time where all of a sudden what I had invested, I'd literally invested years of my life and more money than I had to, to live in France and make this relationship and support David. And that fell apart. So that was tough. At the same time, I was getting massive hate in the parkour community. There's, there's no doubt in like the 2015 timeframe, I was one of the most talked about people in the parkour world and clearly the most hated person in the parkour world. So, and that's a whole nother complex story. And part of that was because I'd built a company and parkour wasn't at the place where people were ready to accept people making money from the sport. It was very taboo. The idea was, well, David can make money from films because he's the founder. Maybe Seb Fukan can make money. It's okay to make money as a stuntman, but anything else is taking advantage of the parkour world. And so making t-shirts and making shoes was still this taboo thing. And I was one of the people that opened that way in the industry. So you have all these brands making clothing and it's like, guys, I'm the pioneer of that. I was the first clothing company in the parkour world in history to have a, a, a real, real parkour clothing brand. Sure. And so now it's like, now it's like, it makes sense. Everyone's going to sell t-shirts. You support yourself. But even today, I think there's this mode of you have to be supporting the community in some deep, profound way, like as if you owe it to everybody else. It's just, it's a very infantile adolescent mentality that speaks to the industry being very young. Every industry goes through this. I understand it. But the point was, is I was the scapegoat for all that, the, maybe the lack of success that other people were having. Other people started brands. They weren't, they weren't selling anything, even though they were famous athletes. Take Flight was doing bonkers business. So I was this, this guy that had all this hate the biggest people in the parkour world were making like basically hit pieces on me and they're still online. You can still find them where people accuse me of being like a thief, of lying, of taking advantage of children, like just, just incredible, incredibly ridiculous, awful stuff. So like I was getting all this hate from the parkour community at large, David, the relationship with David Bell fall apart. The truth was I wasn't making any money from take flight. We were this global brand, but I basically paid all the money to by the time I paid lawyers to protect the trademarks we had, by the time I paid the pros to be involved with the team through endorsement contracts, the operating costs and growing and growing the brand because I had reinvested all the money in things like David Bell and other athletes. I, I, wasn't, I was living at poverty line, like trying to build something awesome. And yet I was being accused and being hated and relationships were falling apart. And then I had some personal stuff that happened in my life. And it was by far the low point of my life in like 2015, 2016, around that time. And how do you deal with that? Like, if you're that low in life, my thoughts are good luck. Like, that's a tough one. And I think you you breathe and you live to see another day. And you know that life, the one constant in the universe is change. It's the only constant. Nothing else is constant except change. And so if you can somehow tie yourself to the life raft or the mast of like your ship that's in the ocean and you're like, Tomorrow's going to be different because the weather's going to change. I'm in the middle of a hurricane or a tornado or a cyclone, whatever, typhoon, whatever it may be, a storm in the middle of the ocean. Like the storm doesn't last forever. Like the boat has to come out of the storm. So I think like at some point you just try to focus on this, is what I did, tried to focus on what's in front of me and, and hope and believe that someday things will be different. And sure enough, you know, they became different over time. But I mean, you know, that's a, I don't have any, I think, I think in that situation, a lot of people turn to drugs or they turn to, you know, alcohol or you know, self-destructive behaviors. 
and it just you just got to keep fighting. That's all you can do. You know, keep fighting indeed. That is absolutely beautiful. I love it. You know, and you, you're a true testament, you know, to that journey. That's just amazing. I love it. Adam. We all go through stuff, you know. <laughs> That's like the human experience is like, we're going to get hit someday. Like, just enjoy the good moments because, you know, whether it's a divorce or losing a family member or a child or whether it's bankruptcy or, or illness or whatever it may be, it's like, man, we all, I, I think what those experiences do hopefully it will they do one of two things either harden you or they soften you mm. so you either develop this really this armor that doesn't you know you, you close off from the world you become bitter you become angry i think those types of experience lead people towards that or it breaks you in a way that softens you and so at a deep level what that experience gave me was deep empathy for other people because you never know what someone's going through. And if someone like, you know, flips you off when you're driving or yells at you in a store or is a bad customer service agent or like, who knows? Like you even wonder if some of these politicians that are, that seem to be completely corrupt, that seem to be completely ignorant about what their, their job is, that seem to be completely selfish. Like you have to wonder, you, you just don't know what someone's going through or what their background was or what they experienced. And so for me, it, at the day, I realized I had a choice to become hardened or to, or to soften. And somehow I was able to land on the side of, of softening and empathy towards other people. But I think we all go through that. And that's the choice you have to make when you go through those times is, are you going to soften to the world or are you going to harden? And if you harden, then I don't think that's the path. I think that's not good for you or for others or for the world. So yeah, we all go through it, man. For sure. I really, really, really hope that this interview can be seen by a lot of young individuals or anybody that's going through a tough time right now. You know, this is phenomenal. What you're saying is speaks home to, I think a lot of people out there that could really hear these words. You know, this is beautiful. Adam, thank you for sharing that deep from within your heart, you know, because you know, this is a, this is what you've struggled and went through and, and now you live to see the other side. You made it to the light at the end of the tunnel. It was certainly wasn't a train coming, <laughs> you know? And so that is something that, you know, it truly, 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 you know, I wish, you know, I have, you know, this, this speaks, this speaks home really personally because, you know, my best friend, the whole reason why I came out to Vegas, you know, he's moved from Minnesota the day after graduating UND and, and we were super close and, you know, he had everything. He had great money, you know, wife, two kids, and, you know, he let uh, depression bring him down and he's no longer with us. And so it's just mm -hmm. things that I think a lot of people, you know, at some point in their life, to some degree, you know, reach that bottom and, and they have a choice. They have a choice to make. And I'm so glad that you made that choice the way you did. And, and I think a lot of people can learn from what you just said. That's awesome. 